Hello, it's Phil from Trifle Production with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to introduce you to an add-on that is not quote-unquote free. Uh, it hasn't been free actually since it's been created, but this is just an introduction to this add-on. Um, there are options for it being free, which we're going to scroll down here. I'll leave a link of the download for this add-on in the description of this video. But let's scroll down. There's a full version, which is $129, the light, which is $49, and the free version, which is $0. And this is the trial version. I've got the full version. Uh, but once you've tried it, you'll probably get the full version, too, because it's got a lot to offer. And if my voice sounds a little bit different, a little bit crisper, a little bit clearer, a little bit cleaner, that's because I'm using the, I've just purchased a new mic, the Blue Yeti X, so it's... Um, if I did tech reviews, I would do a review on this mic because this is a phenomenal mic. I mean, it's just great sounding, makes you have a, or gives you more of a professional sound. But I just want to let you guys know if my voice sounds different, that's why. Uh, but let's get back to the tutorial. And once you've downloaded any version that you have purchased, uh, the next thing to do is just install it onto Blender, which is you know, it's just the straightforward process. Go to Edit. Uh, preferences and then once you click in the search options there actually go to install sorry about that I'm jumping ahead of myself click on install and just navigate to where you've installed it on your system and click on install add-on which I've already done and once that's done uh, it'll come up in this section of the menu let me type in botanic botanic and once you've done that, you just put check in the box and that activates it. And then once you've done that, I've already done it. So mine is, it's uh, down here. It'll pop up on the right side um, of the rest of your user interface, which is the toolbar over here. Uh, but let's get rid of this cube so we can, we can see what it actually does. Now it's got a lot of options, a lot of things you can do with uh, trees. It's got a lot of access built into it, which is great. And uh, keep in mind, it's a zip file, and do not unzip the file. Install it into Blender as a zip file, because it has to go into Blender as one cohesive unit, because there are a lot of you know gears inside of the folder that helps it work within itself, so to speak. But uh, we're going to click on Spawn. And now it's got a lot of uh, trees here. We have, it has a lot of options in terms of the, of the seasons of the trees. It's got spring, summer, autumn, and winter <clears throat> of the same tree, which is great. It's got different varieties of plants, uh, different kinds of trees in it. Conifers, I think that's how that's pronounced. Deciduous. It's got flowers, it's got a garden, grass, ivy, and so on and so forth. It's just a plethora of different things. It even has rocks, which I didn't even know that, but it's got rocks in it. That's pretty cool. So we're going to start with our first tree here. We're going to keep it on uh, use a botanic collection and make editable. Now I've seen from uh, using it in the past, if you uh, uncheck make editable, it saves some processing power in your system because it uses the uh, collection from, from Botanic to import the tree into Blender, and it uses less it uses less processing power that way. But you can't edit you can't make any edits to it, your tree or to your plants. So if you want to make edits to your plants and you're not worried about the processing power of your system, click on Make Editable, which is what we're going to do. Put a check in the box and click OK. Give some time to process. Let's drag this down. And this is our tree. It's somewhat like the Grove add-on, which I've done a tutorial on that before. Uh, but it's got a lot more options. My preference, this is nice because it has, it gives you a fully uh, foliaged tree from the jump. Uh, the Grove add-on doesn't. It kind of gives you a kind of a more sparse looking tree you have to do a little bit of tweaking to it to get it full and I've done a tutorial on that but Botanic gives you a more fuller looking tree and let's look at it in because it works in EV and in cycles but for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna we're gonna look at it in cycles or in EV actually 
for faster viewing. Let, left click on that, make sure EV is selected. And we're going to change our user uh, viewport here, uh, the viewport shading. Let's left click on that uh, icon there. And there it is. If you zoom in to one of these leaves, you can see the veining in the leaves. See the, the veins in it, which is pretty cool. And in the cycles, it has a glossy texture to it. And on top of that is translucent, just like an actual tree. You can zoom in here too and see the bark. Look how nice the bark looks on the tree. That looks great. But let's go back to uh, our uh, viewport shading and change it to a more flatter uh, shading there, solid mode. Let's click on that. And let's look, look at some more options that it has to offer. Now, if, if uh, you import your tree and you didn't check the make editable, make it editable, that box, uh, you'll have to be concerned about that because there's an option here to convert it to editable. Editable, that sounds, that sounds like a tongue twister. Uh, you convert to linked. If you want to append it to uh, another scene, you can do that. You can snap it to the ground. That's the option that we have here. Uh, random transform. And random transform, that actually changes the way the tree looks. Let's click on that. Let's see what it does. See, it changes the way your tree looks just with one click. And if you don't like the way it looks, you can press on reset transform. It takes it back to the way it was before. You clicked on random transform. And randomize variants. If you have a lot, of, a lot of trees here, you can like click on that button. You know, just randomize the trees so that they all look different. Because in nature, trees... There's, there are no two trees that look exactly the same. They all look different. So you have that option there. And if for some reason you import a tree and it's missing some files, you can click on that button and it'll find the files for you, the textures for your the leaves and the bark for the tree, which is great. And sometimes in Blender when you import uh, a model into the viewer, into the uh, user interface to the uh, display here, sometimes it happens that it imports more than one model into your scene. Sometimes it's like a model inside of a model. So this it removes uh, duplicates, whether it's textures or models, it, it'll remove it from uh, your scene, which is great. You have controls for the brightness of your tree, minimum and maximum brightness. There's a button for that automatically. And another thing it can do is add animation. Now the Grove add-on, that's does do and to me the grove add-on the animation for the grove is more direct it has presets in it that are easier to uh, add to your tree uh, with this it has to me it has uh, too many presets or too many options uh, when it comes to animating your tree and I'll show you what I mean so let's left click on this button and let's keep it out default and let's click OK and when we scroll down, it's got a preset for storm and breeze. Uh, but I've tried these storm, breeze, wind, and they don't seem to actually have the strength that I, I'll usually look for when it comes to those different um, presets. But when you scroll down, look at all these options it has for manipulating every single aspect of the tree has uh, branch group one, branch group two, branch group three, and branch group four. That's just for the branches, to manipulate the branches in terms of anim animating them. And it has displacements uh, for the leaves, uh, the trunk, everything. So it's got some more options that, than I would care for. Uh, but it's their add-on. They can do whatever they want with in terms of providing them whatever options they want to provide for the uh, the user. So if you want to manipulate the tree as much as you want in terms of animating it, here you go. Uh, you can scatter them on the plane here, which is also helpful. And with this, this is also quite helpful, manage viewport display. Now, if you have a system that's not, that have like a strong graphics card, or you have a system where actually you have a lot of trees in your scene, this helps you manage uh, your, 
review port so that it doesn't lag or crash in Blender. And you left click in there, it has options uh, for the trees here. Right now, the display is on textured, but you can put it on solids, on the wire, or bounds, which on wired, it helps reduce the. Uh, I mean, obviously, you won't have the appearance of what we're seeing here now because it'll be in a wireframe form, and bounds would be like. Uh, if I can remember correctly, bounds is when you have just when it just converts the tree to a bunch of like cubes, something along those lines. But it will eliminate the textures, which will save on processing power for your system. Now, the thing to me that really stands out with this, uh, besides the fact that it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's got a lot of options or a lot of uh, assets when it comes to uh, the trees. It come when it comes to uh, pots and rocks and things like that is the ivy generator I'm going to show you what that does so we're going to open up a new scene file new general don't save just let that cancel itself out we're going to keep our cube here we're going to open up botanic once again and with this cube selected we're going to scroll down and we have this option here now you can do this to any um, model in Blender, whether it's Suzanne's head or a rock or, or even a tree in Botanic, we just add Ivy. But before we do that, when you click on this arrow, on this plus sign, it's got uh, all these grass layouts, which are cool. They can use those in your scene also. This is helpful because it's got textures for ground and it's got you know grass, uh, different kinds of grass layouts in there, which is great. Uh, but back to the Ivy generator, you just have an object or model in your scene selected and press on this little squiggly icon left click on that and we're going to just draw ivy on this and you just left click and drag and it gives you like a it's a light uh, grayish uh, looking line you can just draw on it on your object like this and then once you're done doing that, press on convert. And it converts it into Ivy. And then it gives you more options. I think this is like really, really cool. And it gives you options in terms of like the size of the stem. And the stem is this vine part here. You can make it bigger or thinner, thicker or thinner, let me say. Uh, you can change the emission of it, which would be the number of leaves coming out of it. Usually emission in Blender <clears throat> Excuse me, Emission Blender is like light, but for some reason they named the popula population or the populace of the leaves as Emission. So you're going to increase the number of leaves here. Uh, I can ch the seed is just a random layout of the leaves. You can change the size of the leaves with the scale, make them smaller or bigger. And you can change the rotation, the scale randomness that helps too. So that they're all not the same size you can have you can have some situations where you can have one leaf cut into the other leaf which is what's happening here but because they're so bunched up that you can't really notice it when it's rendered and then you can uh, randomize rotation and so on and so forth with this the density down here once again it gives you a lot of options and sometimes it seems a bit much uh, but just use it as you as you would want to use it and I'll look at this through the uh, uh, EV because this, this renders an EV and a cycle. So let's left click on our uh, viewer shading to EV. Let's click on that. Give it a second to uh, render out the textures. And even though the leaves are, they're low poly leaves, when they're rendered out like this, let's turn off the out, our, uh, layouts, the overlays here. Look at how realistic these leaves look. And it just looks great. And this is just in Eevee. In Cycles, it looks even better. So yeah, this is really cool, really impressive, uh, really impressive piece of, uh, of an add-on. So yeah, that's today's Blender Quick Tip, the Botanic uh, add-on for Blender. And uh, once again, I hope you guys who have been watching the videos, ha I hope this has helped you uh, make a choice in terms of buying this add-on and using it, whether it's the trial version or the light or the full.
because this will, this saves a lot of time when it comes to making uh, you know nature scenes with grass or maybe you want to scene with somebody's front yard and things like that this saves a lot of time uh, but thank you guys who have been watching thank you guys who have subscribed in the past those of you who are uh, subscribing now and those of you who are subscribing in the future and I will see you guys on the next one all right adios